Going around the world in 80 movies by crossing waters on a cruise called Scenic Scandinavia bears little resemblance to on-screen adventures of Kirk Douglas, Tony Curtis, or Travis Fimmel in their versions of Vikings. Forget power plays, fearsome battles, and impressively honed bare chests. A plethora of buffet and food options on board the Viking Jupiter ship, plus in various villages, meant no chance at maintaining a honed physique as we landed in ports where our version of plunder meant taking away new experiences. We came, we saw, we conquered nothing other than an urge to indulge in a third portion of ice cream. It burns. Some call it the best ice cream in Sweden. This is my licorice. I like that. And while those movie and television Vikings ventured to southern locations, we traveled to the explorers' Scandinavian homelands and found connections to other screen adventures. Our first stop took us to Copenhagen in Denmark, whose most popular female features blockbuster movie status. Well, some claim that the country's queen, Margarita, qualifies as most popular, but worldwide more people know about The Little Mermaid, a fairy tale creation by Hans Christian Andersen, who became the heroine of blockbuster movies plus, in statue form, the city's biggest tourism draw. A short stay in the Old Town reveals sights from movies like The Danish Girl, but cruise itineraries rarely allow enough time for full exploration. As one Copenhagen movie title puts it, when it comes to visits, the city warrants another round. Our next stop took us to the portion of Denmark suitably labeled Jutland because it juts out on a peninsula. Movie-wise, the region's northern part hosted a wonderful Oscar-winning film called Babette's Feast, written by Danish legend and out-of-Africa author Isak Dinesen. Though the movie's title character finds herself horrified by regional food, today's Jutland and its main city of Aarhus boast Michelin star restaurants. Our little Viking group limited local dining to pastries, which boast world-class recognition under the name Danish. Movie links continued on our Viking excursion, though the next stop cheated a bit in the Scandinavian label. We landed in a German port called Warnemunde, but immediately set out on a three-hour train ride south to Berlin. No stranger to filming, Berlin boasts such truly great films as Cabaret, though day-tripping Vikings more likely catch familiar film sites like Checkpoint Charlie, Part of the Wall. Beer. Beer. <coughs> it's all right inside part of the original Berlin Wall and uh, in front, left hand side. The Brandenburg Gates and the Victory Column, whose golden angelic statue features in the art house classic Wings of Desire. Back in Scandinavia, on Denmark's Bornholm, we found no record of projects filmed there. That oversight might get fixed someday. In the meantime, cruisers discover a pretty community with impressive cuisine and proof that pickled herring can taste really good. Apparently I'm supposed to uh, place my knife and fork in a way so that they'll know I was done, but I kind of thought they might have figured it out. <laughs> Switching countries with our first stop in Sweden, we once again made no screen connections. Instead, Karlskrona features a rare Swedish focus on the military. We are in Karlskrona, Sweden, where their business is making missiles and warships. The island includes a fortress and guards who seem open to friendly activities like posing with my travel mascots Didi the designated duck and Jeremiah the bullfrog. What are your names? Uh, my name is uh, Robin. Oh, that's my name. Really? Yes. My name is uh, Sigvard. Sigvard? Is name? No, no, no. He's, not, he's not a Sigvard. From Sweden, we moved on to Gdańsk, Poland, historically significant and seen in documentaries as the city where World War II officially started. Local author Gunter Grass writes about this important period in his surrealistic novel, The Tin Drum, which transformed into an Oscar-winning movie using the city's German name, Danzig. The Tin Drum includes only a few iconic city images since filming proved difficult during the Soviet regime. Decades later, the city welcomes visitors who throng amidst the old town, appreciating impressive architecture, beautiful amber, and a local liqueur featuring flakes of gold stones through the whole history of the human being uh, that we have. So it just puts a little bit of more respect inside the bottle and it looks perfectly how those 
plagues are slowly going down. So, when all of you will be ready, you don't need to drink it like a shot. I know that vodka usually is like, you know. But it's a liquor, even though it's strong as vodka, you just sip it. In Poland, uh, cheers is Nazdrowia. Nazdrowia. Back in Sweden, we found a screen link on Gotland, where main city Visby boasts about its ruins and roses. Down Rose Lane lies a flower-laden door that played a candy store in the popular Swedish story about a pigtailed girl named Pippi Longstocking. Around the world in 80 movies in Visby, this is Pippi Longstocking's favorite candy shop on Rose Street. Shifting countries, we landed in Finland's autonomous territory, Mariaham, or Mariham. On IMDb, they list A Hedgehog's Journey as being a film in Mariaham. You can find it for seven minutes watching A Hedgehog. Forget any sonic action, this seven-minute project looks like a home video that inadvertently captures the title animal on nothing more than a stroll through woodlands. Potential movie connection, a yacht used in a James Bond movie, GoldenEye. Wandering back to our ship, we visited a maritime museum that reminded me of another movie. It does down here give you a sense of another movie, Master and Commander. So even though this is a ship from the 1930s, I still think Master and Commander, far side of the world, will give you a sense of what this ship must have felt like going south of the equator. Cruising away from Mariaham put us into a portion of the Baltic Sea filled with Swedish islands, some tiny and others bigger, like the one featured in Bergman Island. Bergman Island pays tribute to the country's most important filmmaker, Ingmar Bergman, who gained controversial international acclaim directing Summer with Monica. Monica features bare breasts, a shocker in the 1950s. It also highlights beauty on Swedish islands and in Stockholm. Stockholm, from our balcony. This may be as dark as it gets. Uh, I don't know, I hope it gets a little darker. Eh, we have curtains, we'll deal with it. The capital city hosts many other productions, including two versions of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, gaining massive international attention from its twisted Nordic noir mystery. Visitors who flock to the city's old town find a different kind of movie link at the Nobel Museum, where displays highlight prize winners whose lives and efforts often inspire big and little screen adaptations. We had lots of science, had some, lots of literature, uh, all kinds of interesting things talking about innovative ideas that change the world. And what's really important, uh, what do you think of a country that makes the moose its national animal? I want to see one. A Where moose. are they? Well, I don't think they're in the main square of Stockholm. From prize winners to mermaids, scenic Scandinavia lets its Viking visitors take away memories to treasure. <laughs> 